Aloha mai kako. In celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Kona Coffee Cultural Festival, the Donkey Mill Art Center presents this virtual exhibition tour of our latest exhibition, Kona People. My name is Mina Ellison and I'm the curator here at the Donkey Mill Art Center. And in this exhibition, Kona People, 12 local artists were paired with Kona farmers to create works which explore the essence of Kona people through explorations in portraiture. From paintings to digital media and drawings to photographs, artists use a variety of media to capture connections between these farmers, the Aina, and their work. In this collaborative project, farmers and artists shared stories, lessons learned from the land, and visions of the future. By connecting artists and farmers, we bring together people who share unexpected similarities. Opportunities to connect with like-minded folks doing similar work in another field felt confirming, synergistic, and full of potential for our participating farmers and artists. This project made space for a special kind of storytelling, sharing, and collaboration. Take, for example, Miho Morinoi's piece, Sketches of Hiroki. Through a series of interviews with her father, they discuss similarities between the work of farmers and artists and the discipline necessary for success. Her sketches in watercolor and pencil capture Hiroki's personality, work ethic, and his favorite parts of their coffee land. In the portrait of Wilford Yamasawa, Adair uses soot, charcoal, and coffee resin to create billowing clouds of smoke within which Wilfred is shrouded. Through this technique, Adair alludes to Wilfred's use of heat not only in his coffee roasting, but also in reference to his work as a glass artist. Amanda Lillibridge created a 29-second video for her portrait of coffee farmer Joshua Baranian. The video collage moves quickly with a rhythmic beat as its score. Scenes of Josh working on his farm and the many processes of coffee farming are framed by images of the ocean and of the verdant landscapes which surround us here in Kona. In her painting of Chantal Chung, Aspen Dewey portrays Chantal seated amongst Kalo at Ma Ona Community Garden in Ho Nao Nao an important community hub providing access and resources which encourage composting and sustainable farming practices. Aspen incorporates the use of cardboard into her oil painting, which is framed by upcycled wood of a shipping pallet. Noel Badge's Pew's use of vibrant colors and bold lines in portraits of Amanda Gilroy and Zachary Langridge express the energy and personalities of each farmer. Amanda, who has built an expanding gourmet mushroom farm, is portrayed with two sides, while Zachary's portrait shows him taking a short pause from all of the intense farming work. Noel's interpretations of Amanda and Zachary express their dedication to innovate and create farming systems which are not only sustainable, but work to heal the Aina as well. Virginia Small was so inspired by the energy, work, and surroundings of mother and farmer Mariah Smith Kramer that she incorporated this light into her oil painting. With her own two hands, Mariah has picked over 2,600 pounds of coffee this year. Creating a pixel-painted portrait of Norman Sakata, Mary Lovin captures this Pauhana coffee picking session. Through the use of this digital media, Mary incorporates elements of Norman's life into the piece, such as the burlap coffee bag identifying the Sakata family, the family furo, and the basket full of cherry, which was repaired by daughter Michelle. One thing that makes this exhibition so special is the diversity of works which push our idea of what a portrait looks like. Through their explorations, artists share the stories of these Kona farmers in ways that words cannot. Capturing moments of aloha found within Ohana, Brandon Reese's portraits of Angelica and Dr. Richard Stevens and Misa and Jeff Mariyama Jones are timeless. With all that goes into farming, support and love of Ohana make the work light. William Winger's portraits of Karina and Armando Rodriguez and Reynaldo and Esperanza Cancino capture the grace, humility, and pride of our Kona farmers, many of whom bring to Kona their generational knowledge of farming and a strong entrepreneurial spirit. 
William's works of fourth-generation beekeeper Garnet Puet and Kona Born, farmer and throw net maker Apo Aquino, represent the diversity of Kona's abundant resources and the important role of diversified agriculture. Runeet Falls, photographs of conservation farmer Maggie Koilua and Hana Yoshihata's drawing of Kalo farmer Kamuela Meheula show the intimate relationship between farmer and Aina, a relationship so close there's actually no separation between the two. Several farmers share this beautiful Olelono Eyao, Heali'i Ka Aina, the land is a chief, He Kawa Ke Kanaka, the man is a servant. A reminder of the kuleana we have as people to serve Aina, as well as the reassurance that in return, Aina will care for, feed, and provide for our needs. Farmers and artists are challenged to use their failures and successes to learn, innovate, and evolve. Many share the belief that their work is for the greater good and is bigger than themselves. They are dedicated to creating a life in balance with their surroundings and the desire to nurture, malama, and create. The arts and farming are essential to a thriving community. As Hiroki Morinoe mentioned, artists and farmers need to practice discipline and need to show up. It is that need to nurture and create which makes the literal and figurative fruits grow. I hope you enjoyed learning more about the works featured in Kona People. In this next segment, catch a sneak peek of our forthcoming program, Artists and Farmers, a conversation where we hear from two of our farmer artist pairs, Brandon Reese with Misa Maruyama Jones and Hana Yoshihata with Kamuela Mehula, as they reflect on their experiences with this project and share insights about connections between their work. The full length video will be available on the Donkey Mills YouTube channel after the Kona Coffee Cultural Festival. Once again, mahalo nui for joining us and I hope you enjoy the conversation. My name is Misa Mariama Jones and we have a Moringa farm, my husband and I. It's a family farm, so we grow kalamungai, but um, also turf grass and organically processed compost. And let's see, I'm a Kona girl. I was raised here, went to the mainland for a long time, long enough to realize that this is where I need to be. And um, yeah, my husband Jeff and I have been farming for about five years now. Our family has been there for about 15. Oh, my name is Brandon Reese. Um, I'm a local photographer. Uh, I wasn't born here on the island. Uh, I was born on the mainland on the East Coast, um, but have um, been living on the big island this time for about three and a half years. Um, I work primarily with photography. I do other types of art as well, um, but primarily work through photography, through film, um, and specifically for this project I work um, using coffee. Um, and uh, yeah, I just think this is a great opportunity for me to be able to connect with uh, local land stewards like Misa and her family, um, to be able to bring about the story of the importance of farming in Kona and the people behind the scenes. and. Uh, yeah, it's been a dream come true. I think through the whole process from speaking with you, Mina, all the way to like our, our discussions, I think the one thing I learned most about this, what surprised me most about this process was just how quickly folks in the art community could understand where we're coming from. Hmm. And I felt like it was just an instant understanding and feeling seen, mm. which was a little bit surprising. Because mm. in talking to Mina before we met you, I was like, you know, we're talking about art and farming. And I was like, it's beautiful how you're creating this project that bridges the two, because one is in the dirt um, and the other is, you know, it's sophisticated. So it feels like a juxtaposition, but I think feeling so understood made me sort of reflect on, on what it is that's something that draws the two together. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think um, kind of just condensing what you were saying, I think these are the opportunities where we see where like things that we think ju are juxtapositions are really actually the same thing. You know, like nature and art are actually almost one and the same, it's just different representations. Like one is very much our interpretation and, you know, our perspective on what we're experiencing as human beings. But nature itself is also expressing itself in many ways, um, partially due to how we interact with it, but just partially in general how nature behaves. And so 
sometimes, and I think what's really beautiful in working with you guys and working with film, especially here, is being able to be very connected to that work. Um, not just in a physical way, but in a, in a very spiritual way that kind of transcends, where I think art and nature sort of both have that element, if that makes sense. No, I wouldn't say that I was like surprised. I was pleasantly uh, confirmed. Yeah, like I had very um, sort of specific expectations of what I thought this was going to be like. Um, and I mean, you guys exceeded that, and the other family that I that I spent time with too, really exceeded that in their willingness and their openness to. Because I think it is weird. I mean, when I first reached out to everybody, it was like, "Hey, you never heard of me before, but can I come over your house and like take your picture?" And I don't know, maybe that can be weird. And but for you guys and for the other family, it was like, "Oh, like come on by, like whenever you, you know." And we were there, and it just felt very natural. And so, like I said, I, I don't, I wouldn't say that I was very surprised by that, but it did feel really natural when you came by. It just felt like we. You know, just like we had a friend over. Absolutely. But I think that's partially because you're so good at what you do. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And I really do think it has a lot to do, you know, artists and stewards are, we're doing the same work. You know, like our job is to nurture. I mean, obviously everybody has different intentions. You can commodify pretty much anything, but at its core, you know, like art and nature and farming and stewardship, all these things kind of come together. And when they come together in this way, beautiful things happen. And this is a result of that, so... My name is Kamuela Meheula. Um, I'm born and raised in Kona from this place, and I farm mostly kalo, um, currently in the ahupua'a of Honokohau Iki. Yeah, um, aloha, my name is Hana Yoshihata, and I'm from Kehomauka in Kona. And I make art in a lot of different ways, but I'd say my two main practices right now are making paintings with ocean water mm -hmm. and those kind of center around themes of canoe voyaging and celestial navigation and then illustration and in that I focus a lot in graphic novels and um, children's literature. Uh, being born and raised here in Kona, I really feel like um, we're one and the same. You know, the Aina is my ohana. Um, Kona has shaped me my entire life, and um, it's really a familiar a family relationship to, to Aina for me. When I think about Kamuela and her farm and um, my first experiences going to see it and meet her, it made me think about a kipuka. Um, so that's when the lava flows but sometimes leaves little islands of terrain untouched. And in that same way, I feel like Kamuela and her farm, like against all the challenges and having to navigate in a world of capitalism and ongoing colonization, you're holding on to traditional plants and traditional knowledge and practices, and you're making sure that they're safe and that they're preserved for future generations. So that's what really hit me when I entered your property. It was just like a little safe haven for those things. Wow, you make me cry. <laughs> That's so beautiful, like I feel all of those things when I'm there and how blessed I am to be there in that space, but I never thought of the word kipuka. And that's so beautiful. And I was like, oh, that's it. <laughs> like everything, you know, like coming around you and you just stay, you know, you're fixed there. I'm gonna cry now. <laughs> Mahalo nui loa for joining us on this virtual tour of the exhibition Kona People. We hope to see you here in person as the show is here on view from October 23rd to December 18th, 2021. And if you come in before December 3rd, you have the chance to vote for your favorite piece to be selected in our People's Choice Award. Mahalo nui loa to the Kona Coffee Cultural Festival Committee the Hawaii Community Foundation, and the Hawaii State Foundation on Culture and the Arts. Many thanks to our guest judges, Valerie Corcoran and Gerald Walsh, and an extra special mahalo to all of our hardworking Kona farmers who malama aina and keep us fed and caffeinated year-round. Mahalo nui loa and ahui ho.